Life Productions. Royal Life Production in the building. We got Fanatic and Behind the Scenes. What it is, we got what it is. YSB. YSB. Kobe the God. Kobe the God. So, two producers. How did you guys start your producing on music? What, what gave you the love of doing it? Well, to be honest with you, um, I've always been around music since I was a little kid. Uh, my mom said I've been playing the piano since I was like five years old. So, uh, you know, time and time I practice got better and better. I used to play a lot of shit by ear. So I was just sitting down one day in my room and I had a little Yamaha keyboard and I was making drum sounds and shit on it, piano sounds. So I started thinking like, what if I try to make my own beats, you know? So I started doing that. Now, over the years, I got better and better. Um, I got introduced to Caustic 3, which is basically like a, it's a music app, but it's easy to use, you know what I'm saying? Nothing too complicated. And I was at school and one of my homies was using FL Studio. So he told me to start fucking with that. So I've been using FL Studio for like three years now. And um, when it came down to it, me and my homies were trying to do a little group. So they pushed me to become a music producer. I had no idea what production and shit was about. I didn't know how to mix anything, but I stuck with it. I kept practicing and, you know, I feel like I'm at the point where I'd be able to mix shit and do production for a lot of people. But yeah, it's mainly because of my friends and shit. They wanted me to take my shit to the next level. So that's kind of how I started off. What about you? Um, listening to music, I like growing up. My mom's always played like neo soul classics, shit like that. But then when I started to listen to music on my own, there were certain things that stood out to me. And then I was infatuated with being like a rapper. Like I see cool niggas, and I'm like, I want to be like them niggas. Them niggas talk crazy. I want to talk crazy like them niggas. And then with production, I just I like shit that sounds artistic, like, so when I listen, like, I used to listen to a lot of Ye, and then once he got into, like, his, his, like, um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy era, like, that's when I was like, yo, you can really make some crazy shit and be a rapper, like, yeah. you don't even gotta, you don't gotta go and make rock music or some shit, you can make something that's, like, art and stand on that. So that's really what got me into producing. Just hearing hearing them be different. It is it, it inspired me to be different. And then I, I also like niggas like Tyler the Creator. Because I was like I was like that weird nigga. Like I I was skating way before it was even popular to skate. Like so when I heard niggas like Tyler and I see them, I see myself in that and it inspires me to be myself and just be different. So I'll make sure I keep going. Is it for the money or is it for the craft? Well, t to be honest with you, um, I like I like fucking with people, you know what I mean? It's the association and shit that comes along with it. I like interacting with people, you know, like Fanatic, Kobe and shit like that. I like meeting different peoples and seeing what everybody's about, you know? So it's uh, it's not really much for the famous, more so just being around people, getting to interact with those people. You know, checking out everybody's different sounds and shit like that. Well, I think for me, I just want to be the best. At the end of the day, like I want to be better than I want niggas to to look back in thirty years and be like, bro, nobody today is fucking with him. Like how they talk about Jay Z and how they talk about Drake. Like I want to murder them niggas. And it's, it's not even about money. You trying me. to be the Kobe of this rap? Yeah, I want. I want to. I, I'm not in it for money. Money is gonna come with anything that you put your heart and passion to. Yeah, so yeah. I'd rather just. Give it my all, and if I'm comfortable with it at the end of the day, then I can. That's I'll, I'll feel successful if I'm comfortable with it. But I wanna, I wanna be the best. So you saying you wanna be the best? What makes you the best? I mean, to be honest, with you, music. I don't think it's a lot of competition with niggas my age. Nah, he goes crazy. It's not a lot of competition. No, niggas no, don't no, spit no. like the only the only competition with, with actual like rapper rappers is like niggas that's like thirty already, bro. Yeah, yeah. And niggas my age, they here and there. It's a, it's a lot of dudes who, who who are who are in that lane, but real rappers respect real rappers. You'll always know the nigga you cannot go bar for bar with, yeah, and that's the niggas sure. I want to go bar for bar with. Oh, yeah. That's what made me different, cause all these other little niggas they gonna run from that shit. Yeah. So you saying most of these new age rappers are rapping like Migos and all that? 
No, no, no. Them niggas, they, they, they go, they go at you too. I'm just saying it's a lot, it's a lot of niggas in the game that's not really in it to be the best. They in it for some bread because yeah, they broke. Shit. They in it because they want to be famous. They want to be the next popular. Like they want, they want a Rolls Royce or some shit. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah, real shit. I would make music if there was no money involved in music. That's yeah. how much I love music. Yeah, same. It's it's the passion and shit that comes with you know the love for the whole thing. So. Uh, that's that's another reason why I always I've been doing it for years. And shit, you know what I'm saying I'm doing something like damn near every day, whether it's writing music, you know, trying to find something I can sample with beats and shit like that. I'm hitting up people, you know, trying to go to different areas and shit to work with them. So yeah, it's mainly the passion and like when it comes to being the best, I'm not really trying to compete against anybody. I'm just trying to prove that I got what it takes to be able to be on that type of level. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to it, if people want to compete and shit, you know what I'm saying, we can. But uh, like like he said, the money and shit is it's, that's gonna come. You know what I'm saying. But this is my main focus. It's my passion and shit for it. So, so right now as producers, you know we got three of them in the building. We got Fanatic right there, along sitting that's back, sitting in the back in the cut. So as producers, how do you guys feel when you got a hard ass beat, then an artist come drop some weak ass lyrics? I know, I know y'all be having that shit in no, your mind, like, damn. Your heart, bro. Especially when you expect them to rip it and they don't. That shit will break your heart. Every time. Oh, man. Go back to the drawing board on that one, bro. Yeah, because, you know, rappers, like, as a rapper, I already know niggas is a little bit fragile about this shit. Because yeah. you put your soul into some, you think you put your soul yeah. into some shit. And a nigga tell you, nah, bro, this ain't real. That's not the one. That's yeah, the you be like, what the fuck you did? This ain't the one. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Shit, I don't want to write this shit. I got to let someone be honest with me, though. Yeah. yeah. But not yeah. a lot of niggas like that. Niggas think they the shit. That's how I feel, too, about engineering. It's like, I don't want to put shit out that's like garbage. You know what I'm saying? If I have to have an artist come back, two or three sessions, I'm going to tell them, like, bro, you got to get this shit right. You know what I mean? No, like, that's what you put my name though. behind this, you can put Vince by Fanatic, or at least just don't put my tag on this one or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't tell the girl that don't put my name on this one. It'll hurt your spirit. That's really yeah. just about it. Yeah. That's why I don't, I don't really collab with a rapper that I don't already fuck with in general. If I don't fuck with the rapper, I'm not going to make no beats for him. Just because I don't want my name attached to no shit that's garbage. Yeah. Because niggas gonna hear that shit and think that I'm garbage because this nigga garbage. And I'm not yeah. garbage. <laughs> that nigga. Yeah. I, I had that shit happen a lot, man. I would actually invite people over to my crib, you know, fucking fire ass beats. And these niggas come over here not even speaking all the way. They're mumbling and shit. You know. Or get of, hella drunk and go in the booth. Yeah. Slurring the words and shit. Like, it happened. Hell yeah. You know I mean? Out of breath just gotta fuck. come back. Yeah. The but, main thing being an artist is just spitting with confidence. You yeah. know what I mean? When you go in the booth, it, it's in your head a certain way sometimes when you project it, it don't sound like that. Yeah. So learning your voice as an artist is one of the main things, but don't be afraid to try new things either. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? that's, how, that's, how do you tell an artist that his shit trash? That shit trash? To be honest that's with you. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I, for me, it's more guiding an artist to make it as good as possible. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah, nice yeah. about it, though. Yeah, like, he gonna tell me, like, nah, do this again. I'm gonna yeah, tell him, do yeah, it again. Yeah, yeah, rewrite it, or I help him rewrite it. You yeah, know what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, like, that's I'll try right. to guide him to it, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the same way. Hell yeah, because I don't want to crush somebody's shit. confidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I don't want, I don't want to fuck up their vibe for the studio and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of keep it on the low. But yeah, if it's not there, you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely will let them know. Like, yeah, try that, bro. If they recorded with me before, I'll be like, you know, your previous song that you did, that's more your your lane. You know, everybody has their lane, their type of beat or whatever that they their voice will just stand out on. Yeah. You know what I mean? For yeah, sure. I'm <laughs> so as a producer, how do you find your sound? Like, I want to make this type of beats. Well, you know, me personally, it's... So whatever I'm thinking about, like, for my music and shit, when I write songs, whatever I'm thinking about at that exact moment, I try to find a sound similar to it, you know what I mean? So I go in there and I do my little thing. I know whatever I want to say, I want it to fit in with the beat, you know? So that's, that's kind of how I do it, based off my emotions and how, what I'm thinking about. I think for me, I don't, I don't have a song. And at, at some point, I was like bothered by that, but I can't really focus on one sound and continuously make that sound. So it's not really something I, I even think about anymore. Like I just the way I even go about making music is just like I think of the beat as the mood. 
the lyrics are, are going are gonna to be the voice of that movie. It's going to explain the movie. But you should make a beat that's going to like almost encompass that. Like It's like how in a movie, you got, you got the script, right? But the script don't mean shit without the score. You need the score to make what you're saying in the movie. And your voice is an instrument within exactly. itself, too. So it has to go with that movie as well. So I think, I think of production, like, it, making beats as, like, just a tool for the voice. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you can say some shit acapella and that's still hit, yeah. but it'll hit a lot harder with the verse. Exactly. I mean, with the, with the beat. Mm -hmm. Real shit. You know, there's been a lot of people, though, man, who, uh, you know how you said the voice and shit fits the beat? There's, yeah. there's been a lot of niggas who, like, will try to do some aggressive shit, like, let's say on a soft-ass beat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't sound right. Yeah, so it's like you gotta you gotta find what's right for your voice, you know what I mean? It took me a long ass time to find my voice, bro, because I didn't know I wanted to be this, I wanted to be that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I never really was sure, so I had to sit there and just run through shit. Mm -hmm. And whatever I liked the most is what I went after. Yeah, it's good though. So when I say find your sound, you know when artists listen to a beat like that and I sound like a must be. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. How, how, how do you see when you listen to a beat like that? It sound like somebody else's beat. I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of the times, it's just it, nothing's ever really somebody sound. You know, like it's just niggas got there first, mm -hmm. and that's the hardest thing about coming up with a sound. You're not gonna blow up making a beat like another one. You have yeah. to create your own lane and that shit. And it's like reinventing the fucking wheel. Like, how do you know what a wheel is if you've never seen it? Exactly. You don't know what the fuck. To, there's no way yeah. to go about it. And that's why, like, as a new artist too, you got you got, you can't focus on trying to sound like somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean, you have to focus on creating your own way, your own way and shit. I would say that that's one of that was one of my issues starting off. Like, yeah. I would try to sound like the niggas I really appreciate it, but I'm not them. I don't yeah. have the voice. I don't even have the same life as them. I can't yeah. possibly be them. But even experimenting that way kind of helps too yeah. because then you can learn your voice more as well because you know, you're being creative with it in that sense. And even, sure. if you, like, even if you learn your voice, you can you can understand like, like for instance, for me personally, the way I rap, I don't actually rap, but, but it's not my real rap voice. I have to come up with a different rap voice nine times out of 10 because when I rap, I sound too much like Drake. And if I sound too much like Drake, I could not be saying shit like Drake. But it, it won't even, it won't be exactly like Drake. It'll just sound too much like him. And niggas be like, oh, you trying to be like Drake. No, I'm just rapping. This is how my voice is. Yeah. So you got to change. If you know your voice, you can change it and just avoid niggas trying to say you sound like this person, even if that's yeah. your normal voice. Because I, I, that's just, that's how I am. In, in my head, that's how I sound. And then when, I, when it comes out, that's how I sound. Yeah. Sometimes when I sing, I sound too much like Frank Ocean, so I gotta like try to sing it a different way. Because if a nigga tell me, "Oh, you just trying to be like Frank Ocean," I'm gonna knock him in his shit. I'm not. I'm not. I don't like when niggas try to tell you that you you being too much like somebody when you being yourself. Yeah, man. For sure. But at the same time, you can avoid that by just going out your way to be different. And then it, it'll, yeah. it'll it'll set you apart in the long run too. Because as long as when when niggas hear you being different, they can only put you in that lane of. This is your land by yourself. Yeah. It can't be like, like just like how you you listen to singers and you think like, say say you listen to like Party Next Door. Okay, under that Bryson Tiller, under that Roy Woods. Like, there's a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different singers who are in that category because they sound like. But when you separate yourself, song wise and vocally, it'll it'll it won't even be in the same category. Like Party Next Door and Chris Brown in the same same category. These are two different artists that keep themselves in two different lanes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've dealt with that shit a lot too. It's, it's annoying to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, when I'm looking for beats, or if I'm about to make my own beat, what, whatever I wrote down, and how, because I do, I do an acapella first, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'll find a beat similar to that. And I have a lot of niggas compare me to Juice World, fucking Nav. You know what I'm saying? Lil Skies, I barely listen to Nav. I barely listen to Lil Skies. I listen to Juice World, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I don't like being compared and, to Nav. And maybe well. it's not even like that you should get offended by it. It's more a sense that you gotta understand that you might have a voice that sounds the industry. You yeah. Me? yeah. Which is like, when people hear shit, they automatically want to think, like I have a rapper comes in, people come in, they hear, hear him, they're like, yo, you sound like Lil Wayne every time. 
but it's just that he doesn't even sound like Wayne that much when you really listen to him. Yeah. He just has that frequency that attracts you, you know what I mean? Yeah. To that wave of style music, you know? Yeah. So like, there's a lane for everything. You just have to learn to master your voice. And it's fucked up, because you could be saying the hardest shit ever, but if it sound like somebody who they may not fuck with like that, or maybe it sound like somebody and then they try and little bro and be like, oh, you just trying to be like this nigga. Yeah. They won't listen to the music. Mm-hmm. That's it. But unless you think a lot of artists right now sound just alike? S- some of them, yeah. So, yeah, but I feel like it's more just a wave of music. Usually, like, what I notice is that it, it can only that. come in threes. It can only ever come in threes. Like, for some reason, when you hear niggas that sound like, they usually you see the two or three niggas that sound like everybody after that, okay, now you, now you just fall in the way. Yeah. And you got like what? Who do you did the song with? Um, uh, was it going crazy? I think it was from. Who was it? Nigga from Chicago. O-G. He was on Pop Out with him. I think he was. Oh, Cowboy. Oh, Lil T- Lil TJ? Yeah, Lil TJ, Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, Lil All them niggas sound the same though. Yeah. Yeah, they do. But it's only them three niggas that people listen to that sound like that. Yeah. And then you go. And it's that over. style, little genre. Exactly. It, I feel yeah. like there's so many different genres of hip hop now. You got like hip hop, then you got hip hop rock, like where they're doing that hardcore shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. You have like uh, Nas X where he's fucking doing like the country hip hop, you know, yeah. there's so many different waves of hip hop, so many different sounds that are coming out. Yeah. And I feel like hip hop's the only real genre that can do that, you feel me? Yeah, yeah it's, it's you know, like so the many fucking sound, you know? Yeah, like the emo rap shit. Yeah, got the emo rap, the fucking New York shit. hip hop and R&B all the time now. Yeah. Like, you don't hear nothing like the 90s R&B sound anymore. Hell no. It's all different. I'm not gonna lie, when I heard that nigga Pop Smoke or fucking, what was it? I think it was So Any You. So Any You? He did a remix to it, I think so. And it it didn't even release, like, they just had a video of it playing in the studio. Mm -hmm. And like, you could tell that that's where he was trying to go with it. That shit just sad to know that like niggas was niggas wanted to go in that direction. And I can I can tell it's a lot of rappers that want to go in that direction. Like it's a lot of niggas that's actually kind of tired of just yeah. doing everything that's going on, and they want to be creative. But you got to take that stuff yourself. Yeah. Like once you tell yourself, no, I'm not gonna follow what niggas is doing. That's yeah. where you set yourself apart. So how do you set yourself differently as a producer? not do the shit niggas is doing yeah. really like that's really the only thing you as a producer you listen to niggas beats and you notice the patterns on everybody's beats yeah and everybody's projects so only thing you can do to stop yourself from doing that is just not do it yeah it's it could be kind of hard too you know what i'm saying because like you listen to some shit and it sounds fucking dope you know what mm-hmm. i mean it's like i want to make some shit like that but um you know, when it comes down to it, you know, just try to try to be yourself, you know what I mean? Um, there's nothing wrong with like getting, you know, little tips and shit, little tricks here and there, but as far as trying to copy somebody else's, you know, sound. Like, Actually, wait, you know what, let me stop, cause the, there's niggas that probably will watch this and be like, trying to get some information. And to be honest with you, the way you can make yourself sound different isn't just by not doing whatever the other niggas doing. That's a real vague ass answer. The way you do it is sound choice. When you listen to a Drake song, it can have an old school as beat pattern, but the sound choice is what'll stand out to you. Because when you hear music, the patterns aren't really what you're listening to. You're listening to the sound. So like every nigga using the, the plug 808 or the or the um Zayto 808, like yeah. that's the sound choice. You can change that up. And you can go and find some weird ass 808 and play that shit the same way and it'll hit completely different. It makes you stand out. Just by using different sounds, it makes it, it makes it seem like a whole different beat. So your sound choice is always gonna be key to standing out. Just like how Tyler, Tyler uses really, really cool and intricate beat patterns, yeah. but it's the sounds in his in his music that are that are his character. When you hear a Tyler song, you hear something different. It doesn't sound like what you hear. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't sound like what you hear every day. So if you make the conscious effort to go out your way to change the, the sounds you're using, mm-hmm. then you'll definitely stand out all the time. You, won't, you, you, you ain't got no choice but to stand out. Yeah. It could be anything like a, like a snare, a hi-hat, it could be anything, just change it. Yeah, that's it.
Yeah. Niggas, niggas follow the wave of what's cool to use or what's the hottest new sound and shit. You can go on, like I was telling Molly, Reddit. You can go on Reddit and find a shit ton of fucking 808s and just 808s alone will make your beat sound different. And that could spark, that could spark you going and being like, mm, I don't want to use this snare I always use with this 808 because it's a different 808. I want to do something different. And you do something different. Now you got a whole different sound that niggas cannot copy because it's not, it's not, there's no recipe to that. Mm -hmm. You just created something. That's art. That's art. That's where the artistic creativeness comes in. You yeah. got to just be like, I'm just, I'm just working right now. Yeah. Let that shit flow from you. Don't go with a with a template of how niggas make music. Just let that shit come to it's you. It's your own art. Yeah. You can paint it how you want. You you'll know. always you, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you just let shit come to you, it's it's yeah. it's almost like you'll it'll personify you in the music.